another episode of Explore. I'm super grateful to be here with Dawn Bates, aka Dawny B, and her son Nasla today. Um, we are going to be chatting about so much cool stuff. We're basically just letting the conversation flow in this session. Guys, firstly, thanks so much for being here with me. Yeah, Vera, thank you for the invite. It's been amazing. Oh, I am excited to dig in. And what about you, Nasa? <laughs> Suddenly stage fright. It's all good. <laughs> cool. So uh, we're going to be talking all things location-free. Dawn is an absolute legend. She is an author of three books with another one about to be published. She's currently writing another three books from what I understand from our messages back and forth over the last week. <laughs> She's sailing around the world, world writing her books, um, coaching clients to write their own books as well, accelerate their businesses and also become the person that they've always wanted to be. She is the mother of two amazing young men who are 16 and 12. Nasa is here with us today. and the mother of two fur babies as well, who are being taken care of while she circumnavigates the world. What a legend in sailing ships. So we're going to chat about being location free today. We're going to chat about so many different things. If you're not following Dawn, get on it. She's got really good content. We're going to drop all that at the end. Firstly, Dawn, what I would love to know is like, what is your mission? Like I wrote down when I was writing notes with this interview in mind, I like mama on a mission because you seem to be out there like ready to do things like you're there to make change. So what would you say your mission is? Well, see, this is the thing. It, you, you set a mission and you hit it and you think, oh, I was just, just, just not big enough. Was it obviously? But ultimately, it is to inspire people to actually live a life they love and to let go of all the social conditioning and all the fear of being who they truly are deep inside. Because we're, we're all in that space. And, and it doesn't matter which level you're at in life. It doesn't matter what level of success, what level of business, what level of parenting, what level of sport or whatever it is. There's always the next level and there's always moments like, what I thought I dealt with this and it's like come on let's go do it let's go be the very very best version of self always awesome and now so for you having a mum with a mission like that like what do you believe life is about I've never known him so quiet I'm confused. What, what do you mean by that? What, what do you think life is about? Is it about having fun? Is it about adventure? Is it about getting a good job and working hard? There's no wrong or right answer, by the way. I was just actually going to say there is no right or wrong answer. There is just what you feel is right. It's just your religion and everyone wants to hear what you have to say about what life's about. Do you want to come back to that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah we totally can cool beans so dawn how have you raised your boys we'll start on the parenting level how have you raised your boys with that mission in mind oh to question everything even me yeah you know, if, uh, absolutely because they are individuals in their own right they also and one of the things that people will read at the beginning of every single one of my books is a dedication to my boys where you, you have these thoughts, you have these feelings and ideas and you have a voice. So use it, you know, never be afraid of um, what other people think or, you know, if they are not able to question me, when we used to go to mixed martial arts and I used to say to them in the dojo, when I'm in this dojo and we're on the mats, I am not your mum. <laughs> you can't be if you're not prepared to stand up to me as your mum and say this is who I am and this is what I stand for then you, you can't do it to anybody and so I've always encouraged them to speak their truth I've always and some I, you know sometimes I've got a why did I teach him that yeah I can imagine <laughs> back and, stuff, and I'm like because I'm your mother and I've said so and then I've just started laughing because I'm thinking you've 
encourage them to speak their mind. You've encouraged them to own their truth. You know, you, they are individuals. They, they may be humans I gave birth to, but they are individuals in their own right and they have their own ideas about something, about things. And that's what I want them to, I just want them to be comfortable in who they are and speak their truth. So yeah, mm -hmm. they are. And what's been one of your proudest moments of them speaking their truth? Oh, I love it when they, do you know, the last time, I think one of the most recent times, mm. um, there's one that really comes to mind, but the, the last one, last time that NASA came out to visit me, we were at this water park oh. here in Tenerife called Zion <laughs> Park. And there's this ride called the Tower of Power. And I look, he was like, are you going on that? I'm like, no. He goes, why not? I'm like, it's a bit tall, it's a bit high. It's a bit scary. <laughs> what did you say to me? Uh, you can't tell people to get out of their comfort zone. Completely called me on it. <laughs> called out, called out on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm walking up these stairs going, shit. Like, girl, like, really? I'm little, like... How many stairs? Oh my God. I feel like I've just done a huge step class. And you know, you round the corner and then like you get at the top and they give you cold water to get into. Like you're at the top of this death slide. And they don't even give you warm water. They give you cold water to get into. And then they push you down. And it's not as even if you've got a choice. But the fact that he called me on it, I was just so proud of him. So um, they both do it, both my boys, but for those people who will go on to read Crossing the Line, my last book, one of the, I think the proudest moments when we were in the courtroom, when the judge said to them, has your mother asked you to say anything? Or, and um, they both went, yep. And I'm thinking, oh no. <laughs> I mean, I trusted them. I knew that there was nothing to hide or anything, but when they, and you could see the judge and the prosecutors like going, yeah, like, we've got an out. And they go, what was it your mother said? They went, oh, she just told us to tell the truth. That's just it. We just got to tell the truth. And it was just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always tell the truth. Always. Absolutely. Always tell the truth. Your own truth. Own your truth. Mm -hmm. Own who you are and what you stand for. Always. Hey. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, speak your truth though. absolutely right the yeah. only way to be yeah it's not the only way to be but yeah and you guys have just reunited in the last couple of days and I can see the smiles on your faces actually it's a while ago now but it's so nice to see you guys in the same space what is it like for you Dawn to live your best life and circumnavigate the world sailing all around you've been away for quite some time now what's it like for you to make that decision and go i'm going yeah it means i'm leaving my boys somewhere else and i'm heading off well it was a long time coming wasn't it we sat around the dinner table for months discussing it and i mean it was this one um, that turn around, well, mummy, if you don't go now, you're just going to be too old if you wait for me. <laughs> Cheeky sod. And it was like, but you've, you've got to go do you, mummy. You've absolutely got to go do you. And it, it is difficult. I mean, I mean, I get asked, I mean, I know that these are, no question is a stupid question. I hesitate saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but when people say, do you miss your kids? No, not at all. <laughs> like anyone who is a mother will you know do I miss the day-to-day -day parenting like they're bickering and you know saying take your plates into the kitchen or like you know they're getting them ready like do I miss them like no do I miss them and the conversations am I that boring <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> but I remember being in the bath and uh the boys were, it was a Friday night, the boys were in the, in the living room and um, it was a Friday night session, mummy's like bath time, the boys were having pizza and playing on their Xbox. Is it an Xbox you have? We had an Xbox. An Xbox. And a book. 
Yeah. And we never found out. Yeah, well, that's not relevant right now, is it? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and I remember listening to, can you remember when Ali did Behind Closed Doors, the podcast, Behind Closed Doors, Ali May, Alicia Albley? Oh, oh, I cried my eyes out she it was like she had just smacked me upside the head and ripped my heart out and I was like right that's it I've got to go right now we I'd always said to the boys we're going to go to New Zealand we're going to go visit Uncle Tim we're going to go do this we're going to, and I didn't know how it was going to happen I just knew it was going to happen I'd said it was going to happen for so long and the moment I left and the like about a week before you left to because you came out for five weeks with me didn't you to New Zealand yeah and the final week, I was just, the slightest little thing would set me off in tears because I knew that they were going home. Not only were they going to fly halfway around the world on their own, on an airplane. So the thoughts of, what if the plane crashes? That's not going to happen, Dawn. Don't put that out there. You know, flight tracker, flightradar24.com. Amazing for a location-free mother who flies her children all around the world. You can sit there and stalk the plane wherever they are. You know exactly what wind speed it's going at, what altitude it's at. <laughs> and you go, right, they've taken off, right, they'll be here in so many hours. But I remember I booked a six-month return ticket. I knew that if things didn't work out within six months, they weren't going to. Because I just know. But I knew that they would, right, because that's just just what happens right when you lock in an idea and you know it's going to happen it's going to happen there is just no other outcome mm -hmm. um, but when I when the day came for that six month trip to head to head back to the UK I was sat on a yacht just off an island in tropical paradise outside of Vanuatu sat there journaling like all day tears were flowing I was like right that's it jumped on the, the sup board, you know, the stand up paddle board. I went, pat, I was like crying, okay, and just channel this out, do some core work, release it. Like, and then I was like, back to the boat, okay, I need to just go for a swim. <laughs> Jump, got my snorkel. <laughs> and it was just like, I need to be in the water. And that's the thing, whenever I get to a point where I miss them, which sometimes I walk around and think, I've forgotten something. Like, Oh no, it's just the boys. It's okay. It's <laughs> okay. It's just the boys. I've just forgotten the boys. It's all right. If we didn't have WhatsApp, it would be a complete. I, I don't think I'd be able to do it. I, I absolutely adore the people who we created WhatsApp. I adore the internet and Wi Fi. I adore the people who, who have created my phone because it gives me access to my children. But when I get into that space, I always remember. I cannot tell my children to go live their dreams and I cannot encourage them to travel the world if I haven't done so, because that would make me a hypocrite. Yes. Yeah. You know, and if I want them to live their best life and know that, because I've got two boys, and I don't want the boys to grow up thinking that women are there just to serve men and give them babies and clean the house, you know? I know it's not going to be. I know you don't get that, but that's the whole point, right? <laughs> that's just how it is. It's just not a thing, <laughs> is it? It's just not even a consideration. Women's dreams. And this is the thing that, and I remind myself of what my mum said to me. She goes, you know, I'm so proud of you. I mean, my mum has probably told me she's proud of me three times in my entire life, right? She's not very, she's not very uh, generous with her compliments, is my mother. Um, <laughs> but when I left, she stood in the, her lounge, you know, we stood there and she was crying. I was like, what's the matter with you? She goes, you're not just doing this for you, Dawn, and your boys. You're doing this for all the women of my generation and all the other women who are still living in my generation that are your generation and the generation beneath. She goes, because we, we never got to do this. We never had the freedom of choice like you've got. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was a lady when I was in, where well, I don't even know which country I was in. It's all a blur. Time is a blur. I, I mean, I know this sounds wrong, but I wake up some mornings, where am I? Oh, which boat am I on? Oh, where am I? 
Like, and that might sound really wrong, but when you've crewed for 16 different boats and you, I can sail in German, but I can't order food in German. That's quite, <laughs> I know, right? No, no. What do you mean, no? No, you shouldn't be able to sail in German. <laughs> Gosschotter, that's the main cell. <laughs> it's hard, but it's not because it's like, what's the purpose? And when other women are reminding you and telling you on a daily basis, on a regular basis, you know, women that are, I mean, this lady was 83, she cried. She, and she gave me such a big hug. She goes, you are doing this for so many women. And sometimes there's a bit of a pressure, to be honest, because some days you're like, I just want to go home and see my dogs and my boys. I mean, no offense to Nasa and my Ellie, but I miss my dogs more than I miss the boys. <laughs> I do. It is, right? I mean, I get to see your face and speak to your brother, like, almost every day. I get to fly them to wherever I am, but... I mean, you've only been here a few days, and how many ch chelp? We call them chelps. We're calling them chelps. Because they're more kelp than chew. That's the way they're the dogs. Kelp and chewy like are our that. dogs, aren't they? Yeah. So we call them chelp. It's just a thing. And they're everywhere. So when I see dogs like my dogs, and I haven't, I mean, I haven't hugged my dog since the 3rd of January. And I cannot wait to get my yacht when I get to Mexico and fly my dogs out because I'm gonna I'm gonna be an emotional wreck. I, I'm gonna have to, have to take the shares out and clean it. Clean it. I'm telling you, it's painful, but you have to come back to mission. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this to lead my boys by example. I'm doing this to inspire a huge generation of people. It's about having a positive and powerful impact. But because I had a dream of living at sea since the age of eight years old. Mm -hmm. And what is the point of having that dream if you're not going to follow it? And why stay in an environment like if... Who's bumping up over here? Sorry? I've got goosebumps. As soon as you said I had the dream from eight years old, I'm like, <laughs> goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to Absolutely. follow it. There's not, you know, we all have these dreams for a reason. And when we sacrifice that to please other people and, you know, with some of my clients, when I want to do this and I want to, I'm like, why are you not then? Go and do it. Oh, but I've got kids. I went, yes, how have I? And next? What's your next objection? And when people say, oh, but we're not as lucky as you doing it's like, no, you are, but you just haven't had the right enrollment conversations with the right people. Let's not start the luck conversation because that one really gets me. Because Sorry. Luck. It's not a thing. Oh, yeah. It's not a thing. <laughs> it's like you, there are opportunities and you create your own opportunities. Because I used to get that all the time as well for traveling. Oh, you're so lucky. I wish I could go. Uh, well, do what I do then. Find a job, mm -hmm. save your money, go travel. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. I don't know how there's luck involved in that. No, no one dropped any tickets into my lap. I worked and paid for those. <laughs> like, no luck, no winning this lottery. And this is the thing, right? The, luck, the lottery, right? Did you speak up? Did he just? It is. When people are sat there, I mean, like, I've got to the point now where I'm hearing people are spending like ten dollars on their lottery every week. That's forty dollars a month, right? Oh, okay. yeah. There are four weeks in the month. Are you with me? Did I send you to school on a Saturday? It's like, well, there's 4.3 weeks on average, so come on, Mum. Like <laughs> you should have heard him yesterday when, um, because we've, I've just had the big massive press campaign go out for my last book, 
and he was like so how much do you get per book what, what what's the percentage you get okay how much is that right okay so let's time that and what how many people are we locking in that are going to read it okay Maybe so oh so yeah i said lock I, I said so one of this many people which was less than half yeah of the copies not the people mm. so if two hundred thousand people bought the book after reading the story in the copy of i'm not sure if it's a magazine it mag in the magazine and they all buy the book. Let's see. Yeah. Um, I think it was seven point three four three million. If two hundred thousand people buy it, and he's already shopping. What? He's already shopping. Then we've got moat bike. We've got jet ski. We've got an island. We, what else did we have? Uh, your brother's having an apartment. <laughs> 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 they're ready for it <laughs> but that's the thing it's like when you are doing this kind of parenting when you share with them and you encourage them I mean he was sat here the other night watching me do my uh, like work with my team for like we've got like this Trello board and we're like organising the team like, and he's just like quite impressive really aren't you I'm just, oh, thanks. you know <laughs> Because the thing is, I've never shied away from engaging my boys with business. They've always come along to business events with me. They've always come along to, well, I remember breastfeeding this one on stage whilst I was sat on an expert panel at a women in business event. A couple of hundred women in the audience. He needed feeding. Khalid was at the other end of the stage with his jigsaws, playing nice and quietly at the other end of the stage. And you just do the business. If you know that you've got stuff to do, you just do it. You, you just, there's no question. If you have this vision and you have this dream and you have a purpose of leading by example, there's just too, for me, there's too many people saying stuff and not backing it up with their action. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be that person. And I think that's one of the things that fuels this for me as a parent. I want, to be the very best version of myself because I want my boys to be the very best version of themselves. Yeah, and there's a lot of people who are parenting like, oh, I'll help you, I'll help you, I'll help you. You do it. You go live your best life. You go, you know, you can be anything you want. And it's like, action speaks so much louder than words. <laughs> it's like, what's the kid actually going to learn? They're probably going to do the same. They're going to have kids and go, yes, you can do it. I'll do everything to help you. Like you go. And it's just not the way that we learn as humans. No. Well, this is one of the things that I, um, we model behavior, whether it's in front of children or other adults. And Joe, uh, Dr. Joe Spencer talks about this when he was interviewed with Ed Myler. Absolutely, they were discussing this then. You know, the way in which we learn is by not just by reading and listening, but by seeing behaviors and going, oh, okay. So that's how they're doing it. It's what, how we coach and mentor our clients. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what we're doing and this is how, I mean, I've learned so much from other people on how to do business online because I'm old, you know, according to this one, I'm really old. Um, I was middle-aged by 35 because this one was doing maths at school and um, came home and said, mum, did you know you're middle-aged? I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm making chili at the time and I've got the wooden spoon in my hand. I'm like, what do you mean? What? And he said, well, the average life expectancy is 70 to 80, 85, I think. It goes, that means if you're 35, you're halfway through your life, therefore you're middle-aged. I was dumbfounded and I said, if you don't get out of this kitchen right now, I'm going to come back to you with this. <laughs> and he ran off laughing. He goes, but you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's it all adds up. <laughs> it does it all adds up. Is it like an old man now? You've got a plank up in here. So, Nasa, how 
do you feel about your mum being gone and like for days that you don't hear from her or know exactly what's going on because obviously you don't have a tracker on her ship right she can track your planes you can't track her ship well i mean i can track the ship but i don't <laughs> i don't <laughs> uh well how i feel about her going off not particularly fussed about it. Are there days that you're worried about her or miss her? I mean, I obviously miss her, but not really worry about her. What about when she fell overboard? Did you get worried by that? Well, she texted, I fell overboard, so. So she's alive. <laughs> She's got fingers, she can text, she's all good. <laughs> Love it. Adults watching this, please model this. Why do we need to worry about shit? She's all good. <laughs> she can still write books and make millions. <laughs> How else do you feel? Well, Go on, dish the dirt. Go on. Well, <laughs> Yeah, what do you, what do you get away with when mum's gone? Let's really get some juicy stuff here. They get to go on the computer a lot. Yes, yes, that's good. <laughs> yeah, enjoy that. He's like, oh, I forgot we're not allowed to do that with you. <laughs> There's more sweet things. That seems to be a trend. But. Okay, yeah. Can't That's think it. of anything else. Computers and sweets. Computers and sweets, yeah. Great. There we go. Nothing too sinister that he's going to reveal right now, anyway. Well, I think the thing is, it comes back to the kind of person you choose to have kids with. You know, if it is a conscious choice, I know that some people, they, they don't consciously choose the person they're going to have children with. Kind of just happens, in inverted commas, in some cases. But I knew that their dad was a great guy. You know, we had, when we spent 18 years together, you, know, you can't spend that much time with somebody and not have, I mean, he, he's an entrepreneur. He's, I mean, he's into films. More he, films. He's doing a lot of editing and producing, and he's also a writer. He eats really healthily. I mean, he has a much sweeter tooth than I do. <laughs> he's Egyptian, so he's going to. <laughs> you know, he, he's a thinker. And we, we, were such, we were so great together that, you know, we, we complimented each other. But I, there's no way, I mean, if I thought that their dad was going to cause any harm to them, there's no way I'd have left them, you know? Mm. And it's not like I've left them either. It's no, it's not like I just left them outside the supermarket, went crack on lads, get on with it. I, it was an act, we had lots of uh, family meetings and I, family meetings. yeah, over dinner, we discussed it over dinner. That's dinner. <laughs> See again. That oh, that we just did, that's dinner because we used to have dinner every single night, didn't we? Um, around the table, it was like a family affair. Very rarely would we have. I mean, there were once or twice when we watched a movie and had pizza or Chinese whilst watching a movie, but that was never the norm. I mean, the mornings would be I'd get up, I'd walk the dogs, do my journaling, wake them up. While they're getting up, it'd be breakfast. Then, then when they get, they're eating the breakfast, we're having a game of cards. Like they would have an hour just to chill out. We're having cards over. I mean, he's too good at cards now. Um, yeah, she's only won one match recently. Not impressed. <laughs> the student has become the master, which is what it should be, right? Yeah. How it should be. Mm -hmm. bringing new ideas to it and elevating but it was a family choice it had to be it, it wasn't just a selfish thing it was like these are the benefits of me going 
these are the disadvantages. How can we turn these disadvantages into negatives? Their dad moved into the apartment that I had and I've signed that over to him now. So they didn't have to move home. They didn't have, so they're still just up the road from their school. There was a little disruption to them. Their dad even moved in like, what was it? Two or three weeks before I left. That was weird. One after. Was it? I can't remember. Let's go with two weeks. Two weeks. We'll go with two weeks. Um, <laughs> for the record. Just for the record. We, ne we negotiate. We do. And we always find a middle ground. And that's the other thing I've always taught my boys. Negotiate. You know, because we see a lot of adults who don't know how to negotiate. They don't know how to compromise. And it's not about compromising who you are, but it is about honoring yourself and honoring the other people within that space. And when people say to me, oh, but... Uh, my husband would never allow me to do what you're doing. It's like, you got the wrong husband. If it's about him allowing you. Yeah. Like, seriously? What, are you, like, prisoner? Are you under lock and key? Yeah. I'm the life away. I'm I'm married. Married. I'm I own you and you own me. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Again, it's the thing with my children. It's not about me. I am their mother, but they, and they're not, they are my children, but I'm not in charge of them. I'm here to guide them. I'm here to teach them. And I'm here to say to them, this is my knowledge. This is my experience. This is what I believe, or this is what I think or feel. Choose that. Choose what choose from that whatever feels right for you. Yeah. I can't control them. They are individuals with free will. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. for them to choose whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. And I saw a video on that recently around like forcing your will on children. It's just well one, it's just not gonna work. No. It's going to drive a wedge between you and the kid and create resentment and probably rebellion because you just can't force your will on somebody. It's just not the way it works. No. And the thing is, it's like if we think back to when our parents, I mean, going back to when I was younger, my mum and dad, I remember going downstairs. I was going to go out raving with my friends. I went downstairs in my, in my I was a lot thinner then, in my hot pants right and like little t little top i'm going out i'm not like, my dad was like get back up those stairs and put some clothes on you look like a hooker i was like okay it's a bit fierce <laughs> you know <laughs> i and like you know my mum made me go in the bathroom my mum checked my bag before i left she oh, made sure i had any money you took the clothes with you on. Well, what they failed to realize was I'd thrown the hot pants outside the window, <laughs> grabbed them on the way out. And the thing is, in some ways, you know, we, those of us who are determined to do something, we will always find a way. You can try and stop us. You can put laws in place. You can put restrictions in place. You can, but our fire will burn it all and we will rise. <laughs> you can try all you like, but... And this is the thing I've always said to my boys, smart people don't follow stupid rules. Lots of rules are really stupid. Challenge them. Always question everything. Including your mother. But be, be prepared when they do question you. Be prepared. Hey. <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, Nasa, what is life all about for you? Oh, what was your answer? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna see your answer. Well, you, think you don't need to hear it again, do you? Just say yes, what I comes do. up for you. No, you don't. Well, let me see. I want to understand the question. That is, what was your answer? No, I didn't what? ask her that. Like the meaning of life. But if you want to go to that level, I guess. Yeah. What was your answer? <laughs> What's the most important thing in life? Life. 
So you can be alive and laying in bed all day long. Yes. <laughs> Is that a good use of life? No. Okay. So if you're not alive, then you can't live life. But what is it? <laughs> I love how literal you are. <laughs> you can imagine the conversations we have, can't you? Like, mommy's up there in the clouds, and he's like, okay, let's bring it down. Let's sort it out. What is your life about then? What do, what do you want from your life? I guess live as long as possible and have fun while doing so. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And what's awesome. fun for you? What kind of fun things do you want to do? Can't wait to go jet skiing. That sounds really fun. A little bit louder, please. Can't wait to go jet skiing. Great fun. Have my jet own jet ski. Yeah. What else? What do you see in your future? Like, do you think you'll have a business? Do you think you'll travel? Are there places that you want to go? I don't think I'm going to travel. What? How are you going to get to all these countries that you, like, we were talking yesterday about Japan. You're having, you're going to have an island. You wanted to go do... How do, how are you going to do that? Are you going to like? Well, I'm not going to constantly do travel like you, like. But you're going to travel. Just not go to places. Not going to take holidays. Let's say. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Like holidays. I was thinking you're going to have one of those um, teleporting machines. You know, those holodecks in Star Trek. You're just going to walk into a room. and You're going to be there. You're not going to actually travel. You're just going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what were you saying yesterday? Yesterday. Oh, oh, I, I want an island, an underground yeah, pool, because it's, it's cool. Love pool. Love some water, don't you? Mm hmm. <laughs> Just share that with her. <laughs> Like, yesterday we went we found this uh what would you <laughs> we we went we were walking along the coast and we found this little area where it was like um it's almost like a lake wasn't it river kind of yeah um it it, it was like so you had you had the coast it was mostly just like swerving in sometimes but this it like just like burrowed into the side and kind of went like a river into the ground, mm -hmm. but it didn't go through the ground. It kind of just stopped and sat there. So we went into the river and we were like swimming along trying to find the end, ed the end of this. There was like two massive bends. Afterwards we got out and that was dead end. But halfway through, well, like more like three quarters, was I was gonna jump off this little rock, rock and my mom just went, oh! And I was like, what, what? So, so she like or something, what? She, she was like, I would, I would get down from there if I was you. And I was like, why? And she said, what if I told you if it had eight legs? <laughs> so, uh, since I have like a fear of spiders, <laughs> Turned out they were crabs, <laughs> but they really looked like spiders and moved like spiders. They were like scurrying <laughs> along. Oh. <laughs> so sweet. He loves adventure, don't you? Like, I hate the ocean floor. He loves the ocean, but he doesn't like the floor of the ocean. Perfect so sailor, right? Let's just go snorkeling and diving, like, and paddle boarding out in the ocean, middle of the ocean uh, on a cold day, calm day, you'd be all right. You can't touch the floor then. <laughs> See, perfect. I want to do that. What do you, what do you That's call paddle it? Boarding. Sup boarding? Yeah. Well, I call it paddle boarding, but it's stand up paddle boarding. Sup yeah, boarding. I want to do that. That sounds fun. Well, we can go do that. It's not a problem. <laughs> And I love this, you know, how he's like, oh, I want to go do this. I think that was book or, oh, I want to go do this. And I'm like, when we've been looking at where my circumnavigation is taking us, 
I remember years ago, we saw something about these, um, you know, like the husky dogs, sledging with the husky dogs. He was like, oh yeah, I really want to go do that. Um, and, and his brother was like, yeah. And then we saw something about an ice hotel. And they were like, no, no. I mean, it'd be cool, but no. really cool. <laughs> Um, so we're, we're kind of adding the countries that they want to go to and the activities that they want to do we're adding them into my circumnavigation so th these two uh, are setting the the course for my circumnavigation i mean we're i'm off to japan it was never really in my thing i mean i love the geishas and um, but they're like oh no manga anime robots what? So they want to go to um, Japan, do that. So I've now got to add that in. I'm like, how do I sail to Japan? And yeah, you better come back here when you go to Japan. Well, I'm finishing my circumnavigation in New Zealand. I'm gonna, this well, this first circumnavigation. I'm going to finish with the Sydney Hobart. I want to finish the circumnavigation on the Tasman. I want to cross that bad boy. Oh, she's not a bad boy because she's female. Is the ocean? But yeah. Why? Why what? Why is everything female? <laughs> it's Mother Earth. <laughs> it's Mother Earth. It's Mother Nature. Oh, look at look at the boat. It's a she. <laughs> well, it is. I don't make up those rules. I think actually men made up those rules about boats and cars being female. To be honest. <laughs> But why? Like they can be, but why is everything? <laughs> I tell you what, when I did hear this, that one guy was saying that he looked into it, he goes, and it's because of the curves of a boat and the, the way in which the boat and sailing makes a man feel like powerful and that he's, he's got a purpose. And I thought it was such a beautiful description of hearing from a man, you know, that when a man is sailing a ship, it, it's challenging. It makes him step up into that hero mode. It makes him step up into the man that he was born to be. And well, I was just like, oh, do you have a younger version? <laughs> do you come in like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, his description was, wow. To hear that from a man, as a woman, to hear that, of why a man chooses a woman. That was, uh, and you know, to hear him say that anything less than a woman who makes you become the man you were born to be, and you know, sees in you a higher version of yourself that makes you want to be a better man, that holds you to account, that challenges you like the ocean, like challenges you like the wind. And yeah but one that you can spend hours taking care of and making sure that she is looking her best. You know, and you invest so much time on, on the way in which she looks and the way in which she moves and, you know, making sure that she's at her peak performance. And it was just such a beautiful convert. I mean, I, I think I was crying at the end of it. Gave me a hug with this big Sinbad beard. But yeah, we'll always remember that conversation with Anton. Beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful. Awesome. It's got his own YouTube channel, this one. Ah, there you go. Me about merch. So that you can, how can they find you? Ninja, Minty King. Yeah, Minty King. Minty King YT. It's not YT because it's, not, because it's on YouTube. It stands for YouTube. Oh, well, what is it then? Minty King. Just Minty King. Yeah. Minty so King. No, just Minty King. No, they need the at sign, don't they? No. No, nah, it's okay. Minty King. Nasa, you have your own YouTube channel. What's it about? Gaming. Gaming. Awesome. And what inspired you to start your own channel? I just like the idea. You just like the idea? What do you do on your channel? Like, what can we find on there? I don't know what's wrong enjoy it. Um, it's more for a younger audience because because old people are old we know we've heard through this interview <laughs> <laughs> middle ages jesus i've only got four years left till i'm middle-aged <laughs> just came out of my 20s <laughs> 
Um, uh, yeah. So what what would they what do we find when we go to your YouTube channel? What what do you do on your videos? Gaming, a couple walkthroughs for things on games. Which game? Different games. Oh, I thought it was just Fortnite. I mean, the most. Of, okay, I'm trying to. Oh, don't just talk to me. Talk to your audience. You're plugging yourself now, boy. Come on, let's, let's do this. Get it out. Sell it. Come on, we'll crack on. What, one of my videos did get 31,000 views, so that, that was pretty cool. Um, nice. And what was that video? Oh, it was a walkthrough. Oh. What like? Awesome. That's pretty much well. one night. I am in the old person category. Never played Fortnite. Don't really know what it's no. about, but I've heard it's a thing. Wow. <laughs> the thing is, when he first told me he was on Fortnite, I'm like, you are for how can you be on Fortnite? He goes, because it's Fortnite. Me, in my old person, thinking, very, very it's two weeks, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who knew it was a computer game? Not Everyone else, people. apparently. Everybody else but us old people. But yeah, no, I, you know, he's got his YouTube channel and uh, we've di you've discussed your merch, but he's got to get more followers before he can really... I had no idea what merch was until he told merchandise. me. Merchandise. Why don't you just say merchandise then? Because merch is so shorter. Oh, my mum, when's the last time you went to a music concert? That's what they sell, the merch. Yeah. Last time I went to a music concert, probably when, how old are you, Bianca? <laughs> <laughs> 31. Okay. Probably when, uh, yeah. <laughs> Long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Music concert. And now, so what do you want to do when you, do you plan to finish school or what are your thoughts for the future? By finish school, do you mean like university and stuff? Oh, like finish grade 12. That's the same in the UK, yeah? Grade 12. It's year. I'm, uh, don't, 12? I'm not sure if, like, I'm not sure if grade one is year one. I oh, know, I think it is. Grade, yeah. grade 12 is like. Year 12 is like 17 or 18. Oh, so that's like six form. Mm. That's the second year of six form. Are you going to go do your uh, sixth form? Maybe. Maybe. And what do you want to do with life outside of school? Sorry, I did a fall asleep then. <laughs> <laughs> like, see, this is the thing that I find fascinating about these <laughs> boys. Like, that they've got so many amazing ideas about what they want to do and what they want to, like, and you now put them in the spotlight when it's just us. They're like, oh, I'm gonna do this and this. And like, well, with this one, yeah, I, I'm, I used to be sure, but well, I just. It's okay. Things change. Let us, know, let us in on it. But yeah. It's not like my dream. Like, I what is it? Well, yeah, books. Yeah. Um, I don't really ha have one. Yeah, but what's the thing that you want to do? You said there's a thing I want to do, but it's not really my dream. Pretend there's no video camera and you're talking to your mum. And this is the thing, right? Remember what I say, you don't have to just pick one thing. I only yeah. really focused on being an author coach, what, three years ago? Mm. When I was 38? Just a little bit later. Do you know what I mean? I've, and this thing, you, no one's ever really got things sorted out or confirmed, and it's always a constant evolution. Evolution, right then. Teacher. You know, it was like when I was your age, I knew I'd always have my own business. <laughs> and I also wanted to do this and that well serves you right for drinking the dregs of mummy's coffee 
serves you right. Right. Um, Brady. Why do you think I left it? Because you forgot about it like you do with tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's a, it's a constant evolution. You, and I know that you've got so many things that you want to do. And choosing like one particular thing out of that is can be difficult sometimes. Like, which one do I want to do? Do them all. But right here, right now, in this moment, if you had to choose one thing, bang, what would that be? First thing that comes to you. Does it make millions? Is it tra- is it? It doesn't make millions of lives. Well, it varies. You so first thing that comes to mind, food truck thing. Good working one day, is that great? Have a food truck thing. Yeah, food truck. The great, love them. What kind of food? Probably, uh, like, what do you call them? You got like bread, but a specific type of bread which you can't remember the name of. And pizza. Can... I don't know if it's pizza bread. Wraps. No, it's not that right. And you can like open it up and you just like shove stuff inside and you can like cook it for a little bit and you eat it. Like a shawarma, I think? Toasted sab- basic, basically toasted sandwiches, but not, not, not sliced bread. Kind of like a pita pocket. Yeah, like kind of like a burrito, but not like wrapped up. Cool. What else? You just can have one. What do you mean? You just can have one food cart. There would also be ice cream. Dreams of a twelve-year-old. Food. Gotta, gotta have the dessert ready to go. They're gonna go looking for it. Why should they when they can come straight to you? I like you thinking. Um, yeah. This is going to be really fun. Mm-hmm. And where would you take the food cart? That's just something. Yeah. Just something it's just a side thing. hustle. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So you can have quite a few side hustles going on, aren't you? What is that? Food and ice cream on the side. Yeah. See, that would be so cool, just to rock up to your own food cart and just get served your own, like, you get to, yeah. And if you make, oh, I want to make it. You want to make it? Yeah. Because I mean, not, all, not all the time, obviously, I'll get other people to come in and rest and come back in and rest. <laughs> just one of you feel like it, really. It would just be great because it'd just be fun. That's what it's about, right? Absolutely. Always about the fun. No. No. I mean, you could go jump off a massive ledge bag. This is so fun. <laughs> you may never get to do it again. Well, no, you may not. Calculated risks. Exactly. Not it's not just all that. Um... <laughs> yeah, but if you can get paid to have fun. Yeah, that'd be that. That's great. So you've got to just now just go have fun and get paid for it. Yeah, my food truck. Because there's, um, on a side note, there's um, a couple that um, I was reading about they absolutely love traveling, um, rocking up at these coastal places where they can go surfing. So what they mm. did is they bought one of these really big, huge Winnebago things. So it was big enough for all their surf stuff on the top. And they opened up one side of it and they've got a kitchen in there. And now they go around serving. Pretty much what he was saying, like these, that they love Mexican food. And they would just go around serving like fried beans and beef, peppers in these like burritos they're just serving it all out yeah, like to all the surfers and then they just go off go find another uh like uh, probably eat most of food. You probably eat most. and that's the thing it's like they've now they've got this thing that they've built and they've got um there's a team of them that just go around now they're like in convoy 
friends <laughs> hanging out. One of them does Mexican food. One of them's doing Chinese. Another one is doing like uh, falafel and vegan food, and another one. Is, and like this, right now, three or four of these people, like groups of people, they're like now traveling around the world together, serving food out of their Winnebago thing, and they're bringing the world to all these surfer spots. Brilliant idea. It's epic. I'm always saying to my clients, like, if you think, like, if you're trying to think of something, when I ask you what you want to do, and you're trying to think of something that's going to make you money or some kind of job title or something, like, forget that. Like, what do you want to do? And then figure out, like, how you can make money from it. Because there's professional puddlers out there, like people who get paid to hug other people per session. Like, there's so many crazy jobs out there that you would go, what? You can like, be a chicken nugget scientist. That's an official job time. Chicken, chicken nugget scientist. There you go. Right? It's like, what are you researching? Chicken nuggets. What about nugget chicken? <laughs> oh, this bit needs to be a little more dense. Yes, the perfect nugget. Exactly. <laughs> What do you want to be when you grow up? Keep it like it's yeah, and even if it didn't exist yet, it does now. It does now. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Yeah. Any final words? Would you like to say anything to the audience about living your best life? Either of you. From you, young man. What, you going to just copy something I say? No, it's like, I need my thinking time. <laughs> yeah, carry on, mother. For me, it's the Japanese theory of Kaizen, constant improvement, and never compare yourself to any. I mean, I know these are cliches, but if you be kind to yourself as well, because, you know, some days you you might like you might be sick and for women you know we have our emotional weeks you know and it's about understanding your body and understanding who you are get present to who you are learn and i've always said the more we learn about others the more we learn about ourselves Mm, being in a space of constant learning um, reflection and spending time by ourselves with ourselves not on our own with our head in the TV or our head in the book or head in the phone, just stillness and never allowing anyone to stop you from doing and being and having. I mean, I've got the, I mean, I always say, make sure it is, you know, be, have, and well, be, do, and have in that order. Because when you become that person and then you do, you have you know become the person you want to be yeah and then do the stuff you need to do to have all the stuff that you want to have whether that is material things or whether that is experiences or whether that is certain people in your life it all starts from within and it's not about buying a lottery ticket or wishing for stuff to happen it's about who am I and what do I stand for? And coming from that place, what is the solution I want to bring to a problem in the world? Find your solution for yourself. Yeah. Just go for it. You know? Be grateful for every single day because you get to have another go. Moment by moment. You might have a bad moment or a, an emotional moment or an upsetting moment or an unexpected moment, but the next moment is a new moment. Brush yourself off, get up again and off you go. Any final words from uh, Mr. Nasa? About living your best life? Because you've not shut up once since you've been here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. What is it you say to me? What? You've got to. You've got to do what you want to do. You've got to go do you. Yeah. As long as it's possible and 
okay, not like loving people. So yeah. Not like what? Not robbing people. Ah. Oh. But yeah, just, um, well, if, if I had to give a tip for living your best life, I would live your best life. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Go. What kind of possibility? Just go right on ahead. I'm wrong with that. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you. I'm going to fill up my water. How are you guys for yeah. time, Dawn? For you I'm to do. I'm going to go to the bathroom and uh, top up my coffee. I'm going to grab a tea. Are you? Yes. I might have a tea too. Yeah, and then we'll go and get some tweets. Now, I don't know if your mum's told you slash warned you. I don't know what to say exactly. But at the end of every episode of this show, we do some laughter. So I do laughter yoga and laughter wellness. I'm not going to get into everything that they are and and we're not going to go through a whole session, but it's a series of laughter exercises as part of it. So what I think we're going to do for this episode is a laugh when people, you tell them what you want to do with your life and they tell you that you're lucky and that they can't do it. And you're like, of course you can. So get yourself in that mindset. No, no, but, oh, I don't understand fully. So okay. I'll, sh I'll show you. So this is what we do. We imagine it. We're having a conversation with someone and we're like, yeah, I'm going to have my own island. And they're like, oh my God, you're so lucky. I wish I could do that. And you're like, you can. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we do. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Ready? So imagine the conversation. They've just told you you're lucky and they wish they could do it too. And now you laugh. So <laughs> 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 we're going to party <laughs> I'm like going to motley mode, you know, like when like it just goes silent and only dogs can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's been awesome having you on the show. My cheeks literally hurt, not just from laughing, but I feel like I've just been smiling at you guys the whole episode. Um, Thank you. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Um, for people on the line who want to find these amazing people, uh, Dawn, you are Dawny B on all social media channels. Yeah, D-A-W-N-E-E-B-E. -E -E. Mm -hmm. And DawnBates.com. That's right. Or Dawn Louise Bates on Facebook, Dawn Bates Auto Coach. Yeah. Lots of ways to find me.